Wake up out of your head, wanker. Hey everybody, it's Jurassic Coast 2000, and I am back with a review of the Packy Rhinosaurus Clash set released this year as a Toys R Us exclusive. Now this is a great set. Um, as you can see, I finally have it. Uh, you guys have been waiting for it, and uh, I'm glad that you had patience to sit through my uh, updates. Um, so yeah. On to the review, we have the Pachyrhinosaurus with Dino Damage and Gunner Gordon. Okay, so this is the Pachyrhinosaurus. Power, 10. Full-fledged. Intelligence, 5. Speed, 5. Special Attack, 4 fo Full Force Head Ram. Well, you aren't kidding. Smash the camera again. Um... So, uh, let's look at articulation first. There's articulation in the jaw. Can open like that. And articulation in the head and crest. I can do a full 360, apparently. And uh, it can go up and down, side to side, and all like that. It's pretty cool. Articulation in the neck can go up and down. Uh, that's part of the action feature, which I will come to in a minute. Articulation in all four legs, except the one that triggers the action feature. Like that. So, pretty basic articulation. Now let's look at detail. Um, starting with the horns. The horns are excellent, all on the crest and on the nose. They have all these... Uh, Marks of wear from ramming into trees, dinosaurs, and uh, people. Uh, the colors are interesting. But uh, knowing as uh, we'll never know what a dinosaur's true colors were. Um, the base color is brown with some uh, yellow highlights on the legs, the back, uh, and the, on the crest. Uh, the back is blue, which makes it look uh, a little weird, and a little uh, brown stripe running down. There are blue spots on the crest, mixed in with some yellow. Um, going down towards the stomach, it turns into a sort of beige color, and then uh, going down, it goes to a you know, all the way down here, it's uh, a yellowy cream color. So they're pretty decent colors. Now on to some features that it has. Most of you already know this. Pull back the right le leg. And it does a head ramming attack. Which is pretty cool. And, uh, of course, there's the dino damage, which hasn't been seen since the Lost World line. Not counting the leaping lines. Oop. Just keeps slipping and sliding. And there it is. My only complaint is that uh, the cutout kind of looks a little weird, like something stepped on the dinosaur, like some brachiosaurus or something. And uh, even the allosauruses... Dino damage looks like it's been uh, clawed out or just horned out, but it looks a, a little strange. But it's okay. It's still very a very good thing. Dino damage. And it just clicks into the side. And there's a little tab there so you can remove it easily. So that's pretty much it for the Pachyrhinosaurus. It's an excellent figure. Um, there's all the scales and stuff, especially, uh, up on the shoulder blades. 
yes, this this is a, just an excellent, excellent figure. I uh, I am proud to own such a great sculpt. And now moving on to Gunnar Gordon. Uh, here he is. Uh, classification: soldier or mercenary. Uh, his specialty is military tactics, and the weapon of choice is a machine gun. I'll get onto that in a bit. So, uh, the figure has a pretty unique head sculpt. He looks a little, uh, angry there. He has, uh, some dreadlocks, rather untidy looking, done up in a little bun. He kind of looks like Busta Rhymes as he appeared in Halloween Resurrection. In fact, I think it's actually modeled after him. Uh... So this figure has your standard articulation, because uh, it's literally just a G.I. Joe body. Speaking of G.I. Joe, uh, if you remove the vest, which I'm not going to do because it's uh, hard to pull off and even more difficult to put back on, uh, on his chest right there, he has a little cobra symbol on there. So uh, that's a little strange. So... Uh, He's wearing uh, you know, the vest. He's wearing uh, the olive drabs, I think, the olive drab green color on the the pants and the shirt, with some uh, armbands and stuff, you know, shoulder pads, things like that. Uh, he has some really nice military pants, BDUs, and uh, he has boots with spats or waders. So this is a pretty good figure. Um, I really, really like him. Now moving on to his machine gun, which is an MG42. Now for those of you who don't know, the MG42 was created in Germany during World War II and uh, was used by the Nazis to kick some major ass in Normandy and uh, you know in the invasions of France and stuff like that, not just on D-Day. They would go in the bunkers and shoot the Americans. It's a very good sculpt, too. You can see all the stuff on it. It's really a magnificent, a magnificent sculpt. Comes with a little bipod which just clicks in. Let me just put it in. And there. It stands fine, as you can see. And uh, it comes with a little bandolier, or bullet belt. And there's a little notch on the side, and uh, the bandolier just clicks in like that. Would have been better if uh, the thing had uh, like a little posable wire, so it's not just straight and looks a bit odd. But uh, he can hold the weapon, and uh, let me just pause for a sec and uh, show you how he looks. And here he is. Now, the MG looks a little huge. As you can see, uh, just flipped on the bipod there. Um, but he can hold it, although it sort of looks a little odd. You do a little first person shooting. Kind of looks like a crossbow this way. So, uh, yeah, that's uh, Gunnar Gordon. And there you have it, the two new sculpts from the Jurassic Park 2013 line. I will be doing reviews of the Jurassic Park 2009 line next, but uh, I think I'm going to wind down for a bit and uh, take a little break from video making. I am going to my grandmother's house for a week. And, uh, until then, my next review shall be the Jurassic Park 2009 Bold Herex. So, thank you for watching, guys, and I'll see you real soon.